morning, everyone. Um, I, today, I want to take you through the dissection of a kidney. Um, so you'll notice I actually have four different kidneys here, all from different animals. Um, so they do range in size all the way up here to a full-size beef kidney um, to down here, which is a much smaller um, um, pig kidney. So this is not a fully grown pig, of course. Actually, um, this one right here is from a fully grown hog. Um, and then this one right here in the middle is, is from a sheep. So uh, that's kind of what we're going to look at today. We're going to start with the external anatomy, try to get those parts down first, and then um, we'll open the kidney up and look at the inside, you know, where, where uh, the kidney actually does its magic. So um, the one downside is looking at the external anatomy, you can't actually see it the way that you would see it in your body. Because in your body, you can actually see here, there's a lot of, um, there is a lot of uh, like this, this thick adipose capsule uh, that is not here anymore. And that's because in order to be held in to your body, um, it's almost like it's webbed in there. Imagine Spider-Man came and shot webbing to hold all of your organs in, like spider webs. Um, that's how the kidney is held up. It's not suspended like a chandelier. Um, it's, it's actually oh, uh, held in place by this, this fatty sheath called the adipose capsule. And we almost never get a lot of that on our dissection specimen because of course, um, in order to remove the kidney from the, the specimen, you, or in order to remove the kidney from the animal, you have to cut it out of that sac. So uh, sadly, we don't get a lot of that. Um, even the renal capsule has largely been uh, taken off here. The renal capsule, um, I wish I had some renal capsule. It looks like there's a little bit of renal capsule right here. So as you can see, uh, the renal capsule is transparent. It's a lot like a sunburn. Uh, uh, like if you've gotten really badly sunburned and this skin is very transparent. So the renal capsule is, um, is, is typically wrapped here. Let me show you. It's usually wrapped all the way around the kidney. Um, but then again, a lot of this wrapping comes off as, as the kidney um, is removed um, and these specimens are, are prepared. So um, other things I want you guys to note is that, of course, the kidney has this characteristic kidney bean shape. So, you know, it's not perfectly, um, it's not perfectly like circular. It's got this little indent and this indent is actually called the renal hilus, the renal hilus. Um, and this renal hilus is, is more important than just the fact that it is an indent. Um, everything that enters and, and exits the kidney enters and exits in this little medial indentation called the renal hilus. So um, there's really essentially only three things that come in and out though, and that's uh, two blood vessels and a ureter. And you can actually see all three of them here because they're dyed on these other ones. Some of these other ones are dyed as well. It's just hard to tell what's what. Um, I'm, let, me, let me start with the smallest kidney here for you first. So um, as you can see, there is this really long cord. Um, and I've had <laughs> kids put down hilarious interpretations of what this cord is to the point where some people tell me it's the umbilical cord. But of course, it's not the umbilical cord because this is not a little baby fetus. This is a kidney. Um, so this right here is actually the ureter. The ureter is that, uh, that long muscular tube that carries urine from the kidney itself down to the urinary bladder. On the average person, it's about a foot long. Um, and there are also, again, supposed to be two blood vessels. You just can't see them here, but notice this ureter does attach to at the renal hilus. Uh, there's two blood vessels that come in and out of the kidney as well. One of them is blue and one of them is red. So this red blood vessel, uh, you can see it's dyed red here, that enters, it enters the kidney, that's called the renal artery. And that's bringing in oxygenated, that's why it's red, it's oxygen rich, it's bringing in oxygenated but dirty blood. Um, and when I say dirty, I use that term sort of uh, loosely because the blood that's actually coming into the kidney is not that dirty. Um, blood as it comes into the kidney is about 1% waste. 99% of that blood is just clean. Um, but we, your, your kidneys are constantly removing that 1% waste um, nonstop every second of every day for your whole life. And then um, as that 1% waste products are taken out, it comes back around and it exits the kidney through this blue renal vein. And the renal vein is, you'll, uh, again, it's blue because um, this is really, really um, 
resource intensive. So not only is it removing uh, the quote unquote, you know, waste products from the from the blood, but it's also using up a lot of oxygen because this is a hugely energy intensive process. As a matter of fact, I often tell my food and exercise science students, you know, if you really want to lose weight, one of the best things that you could do to lose weight is just drink a ton of water all day long. Uh, of course, you'll be taking a lot of trips to the bathroom break and that doesn't, you know, that doesn't hurt as far as extra calorie burn for the steps. Uh, but the biggest reason um, that's super effective is because uh, your kidneys are just burning lots and lots of calories constantly. And if you're flushing more and more blood through them to be cleaned, they're working harder and harder. So, all right, now let's look at a couple other things about the kidney. Uh, I'm trying to think, so I don't think there's any other external anatomy things that I can really talk about. Just the hilus, the adipose capsule, which remember is very, uh, it's practically invisible. And then the, or sorry, the adipose capsule, which is the, the fatty capsule, and then the, um, the renal capsule, which is this invisible layer. So if we were to open up the kidney, and I left one of them here uncut for you. I'm gonna show you that, I'm gonna show opening one up. I, I usually tell kids to open up, you know, cut the kidney in half um, coronally. And remember, the kidney would be sitting inside of your body like this. So this is the front and then this is the back, or depending, you know, if this is on the opposite side, you know, maybe this is your left kidney and this would be your right kidney because, you know, otherwise they're pretty symmetric other than the fact that, remember, the right kidney is slightly lower than the left because it has to make room for the liver. Um, I always tell kids, Try to cut it as best you can um, straight down the hilus so that you're separating the front from the back. Remember, again, that type of cut is called a coronal or frontal cut, separating the front from the back. Now, there's a reason I don't typically cut these small ones. It's because <laughs> when we open them up, right? So when I open this kidney up, Right? It's really not very impressive on the inside. You can see this, this like white section in the middle, but it's not dyed. This kidney isn't dyed. I mostly got these smaller kidneys just so you could see the ureter fully attached. And I think it gives you a little bit more, um, more perspective on what the kidney looks like. So I wanna instead look at these bigger kidneys for a moment. So these I have already cut open coronally. And you'll notice that um, there's some really um, interesting similarities and differences amongst all of them. But the first thing I want to um, talk about are the, the, the main regions. So there are three primary regions of the kidney. And actually, I think it's going to go best if I show it on this one right here. There are three primary regions of the kidney. All right, there's this outermost region right here. Um, which is, is analogous to bark on a tree trunk. And so uh, the, the word that is used actually um, means bark, and that is the renal cortex. Let me grab a little probe here just so I can do a better job of pointing it out. All right, sorry. So right here, this is the renal cortex. Um, now, as we move in, you're gonna notice these really cool, um, like, triangular shapes. Um, this whole region with the triangular shapes is called the renal medulla, medulla meaning middle. And renal, of course, every time you see hear the word renal, that just means kidney. So renal medulla literally means uh, kidney middle. All right, so that's this middle layer. And then you have this cavity. Now it's hard to see that it's a cavity. This yellow stuff, believe it or not, is um, urine. It's plasticized urine. Um, it's even better in this one. You can actually see the cavity a little bit better in this kidney, which is really cool. So um, you can see right here, this hardened urine, I pulled out of this side of the kidney so you can really see the cavernous nature of this. This cavity is called the renal pelvis. So the renal pelvis stores urine temporarily before it, the kidney empties it and it goes down the ureter into the bladder. Um, and your kidney can't store that much, maybe an eighth of a cup. Uh, before it's got to empty itself down the, the, the into the urinary bladder. So I just always think that this uh, this dried <laughs> urine is, is really cool. Normally students think it's pretty fun to kind of pull that out there. But I do think that this kidney shows a better job of, of the cavity that is the pelvis. So the pelvis actually is not anything technically, right? I mean, the renal cortex is definitely kidney tissue, but by definition, the renal pelvis is just a space that stores urine. Now you're gonna notice something 
some more defining details. Uh, and I wanna talk about those right now for a brief second. So um, if I pull this kidney back up, let me grab, well, this one might be a little bit better here. All right, so looking at this kidney right here, you'll notice um, again that there are these, these uh, triangular shaped, this one's really obvious, this triangle right here. Um, remember, that's found in the renal medulla section, and because it's triangular, but we have a three-dimensional triangle here, we call this a medullary, because it's in the medulla, a medullary pyramid, right? A, a three-dimensional uh, triangle is just a pyramid, so this is a medullary pyramid. Um, there's another medullary pyramid here and here. Now, you'll notice between the medullary pyramids, there's a, additional extensions of, of, of kidney tissue, and you could see blood vessels in them. These right here are not pyramids. Um, these are things called renal columns. You can always tell the difference between a renal column and a medullary pyramid because of these blood vessels. Now, again, though, that's why, you know, this, this, this kidney right here that hasn't been triple injected with that colored dye is almost impossible to determine where the pyramids are and where the columns are just because it's not color coordinated nearly as nicely. You can see that a little bit on this gigantic gigantic kidney here. Um, you could definitely see renal pelvis. All this white stuff is renal pelvis. And you could see some dried urine in here. But I, I still am having some difficulty. This, I mean, this clearly is a pyramid, right? You could see that triangular shape. And I would assume then there's some column here and maybe some column to the other side. This looks like column actually tissue because I could see some blood vessels in it. But this one's a lot messier um, than this really um, awesome kidney that I have here. I just really prefer this one. I've actually kept this kidney for a number of years just because it looks so fantastic. So um, we, we clearly have the, the, the renal medulla and then we have the renal, or sorry, sorry. The, some, by the way, sometimes uh, um, instead of medullary pyramid, sometimes they're called renal pyramids, just so you know. So we got the medullary pyramid and we've got the, um, the renal column. All right, and then again, you can see the, the dried urine on the inside. There, the one thing I did want to talk about though, is let me go back to this kidney right here. So the, the, the renal pelvis, that space that's inside the kidney, the renal pelvis is really interesting because it's not, you'll notice it's not just this, this beautiful rounded pit inside of the kidney that stores urine. There are these little indentations um, and I always make the analogy between, you know, looking at Lake Michigan and then looking the, at the Bay of Green Bay, right? Lake Michigan would be the entirety of your pelvis in this analogy. But the Bay of Green Bay is kind of where it juts in, right? And you could think of this little piece of kidney tissue as the renal, as like a renal column. Like, so this, or, or, or the, you know, door, door peninsula. Um, so these little bays, these little, um, ingresses here of the renal pelvis do have a special name. We call this this big portion of the bay, you know, right where it's coming in between two different columns or pyramids. We call that a major calyx, C-A-L-Y-X, a major calyx. And then you'll notice it comes in even further in two spots, right here and right here. Those are called minor renal calyxes, but a, a, a calluses, I'm sorry, if it's plural, we change it from calyx with an X to calluses. Um, C-A-L-Y-C-E-S. -E um, and uh, so we've got major and we've got minor, um, but they're all just parts of the renal pelvis, okay? So uh, in all actuality, that's really what I wanted you guys to learn uh, today. I just wanted you to learn essentially the three outer structures, the, and <laughs> two of them you couldn't really see. Uh, we, we, we went over the, the, the renal or sorry, the adipose capsule, which remember is not visible in any of these kidneys just because um, that would be inside the animal and you'd have to cut it, cut through it in order to take the kidney out. We talked about the renal capsule, which is this semi-transparent layer. Um, and then we talked about the renal hilus, this medial indentation in which all the blood vessels and the ureter um, enter and exit the kidney. And then when we opened up the kidney, we really talked about the three main regions of the kidney. You know, we talked about the renal cortex, the renal medulla, and the renal pelvis, working from outside to in. And then we finally ended by discussing the specific, um, the specific structures of those. So there aren't any specific structures that I want you to know in the renal cortex, 
but there are absolutely some specific structures in the renal medulla or the medullary region, and that would be the medullary pyramids. But then in between, where you have the interlobar arteries, you've got the um, renal columns, and then lastly, where the urine is stored, which is seen a lot better here, um, you have the renal pelvis, that little cavity in the middle that stores urine. And that is the kidney. Thank you so much, and I hope you learned something.